Okay, well, thank you, Claire, for uh, joining us on, in our Chemistry 108 class. I uh, hope all is going well with you at LSU. How are you doing? Uh, I'm doing good. I'm tired, but I think that's expected as a grad student. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. So uh, the Chemistry 108 class should know that you are a tw uh, fall 2020 graduate of our uh, chemistry program here at the University of Southern Mississippi and uh, you are now at LSU uh, pursuing your PhD in organic chemistry and and you've won an NSF fellow uh, pre-doctoral fellowship which we'll talk a little bit about uh, in a little bit so that that'll give kind of the class a little bit of a an understanding of where we're going uh, our first question for you is you know why did you pick chemistry uh, as, as your major what was it that interested you about chemistry so when I was a junior in high school, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I think most high schoolers understand that feeling. And then I was accepted into the ACSC program by you the summer after my junior year. And I just, I fell in love with doing reactions and observing them. Because I was in Dr. Guo's physical chemistry lab, which I know physical chemistry makes a lot of people groan, but I enjoyed my time in that lab while I was in there. That's right. And so you also spent, um, so just to give some context, Project Seed is an entire summer experience for you, uh, kind of like an internship for high school students, if you will. Uh, and Dr. Guo did take you. I do remember that. And I also think you got a publication out of that summer experience. Is that correct? That is correct. Yeah. So you were working on some, probably some polymers of some sort with, with energy conversion or something, wasn't it? Yeah, uh, so I think the polymer I was working with was P3HT, and we were doping it to make the semiconductive portion of the polymer be a little better with the low molecular material, just to keep it simple, because the high molecular material, if you look at it, it's kind of messy, so it's kind of hard to work at with. So we wanted to see if we could make the low molecular weight polymer act like the high molecular weight polymer by uh, doping it with F4, TC, and Q. Yep, absolutely. And then you also took your, uh, did you take your seed project and, and take it to a um, um, uh, science fair as well? Is that? So I was only able to go to the regional science fair that year. And for some reason, my uh, high school teacher was like, I don't want y'all competing against each other. It put me in the physics category and I got second in physics. And I was like, I guess it makes sense, but it was more chemistry. <laughs> well, there is a lot of overlap between chemistry and physics and math and all that good stuff. It's all STEM in a way, right? Yeah. So other than your seed experience, because that happened before you started as a, as a student here at USM. Um, so once you came here at USM, when did you start getting involved in undergraduate research? So while I was in organic chemistry one with Dr. Donahue in my spring semester of freshman year, I started shadowing in his lab because he actually invited me to come shadow. And I actually, I actually fell in love with synthetic pathways. I really don't know why when they can be such a headache <laughs> when you're trying to retro synthesize natural products, but I then actually started doing research hours in his lab my sophomore year. Okay, and, and probably started off as Chemistry 392, introductory research, and, and got some credit hours there. And got them yeah. So why don't, we, why don't we expand on that a little bit? Um, so uh, Dr. Donahue invited you to come into his lab and do some research. Tell, tell the students a little bit about what it was like being uh, a, a sophomore uh, and, and doing research, kind of what was your time commitment? How much time a week did you spend in, in the lab and what kind of activities did you start off with? So I actually continued shadowing over the summer because I wanted to get used to doing experiments before I started my actual research hours. And I believe you can do six hours of 392. Uh, 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 over two semesters, that's correct, yep which uh, you don't have to like take three hours and then three hours. I think I started with two, but I was in the lab uh, my sophomore year, every second I could spare because I just, I love doing reactions and uh, my first few didn't work. So I was like, I want something that works. <laughs> well, I mean, and you know, that is something, right? So, I mean, that is a difference between going to your organic lab or your general chemistry lab where you're doing a, 
uh, an experiment that has been done time and time again. We know that they work versus real research, right? So you were really doing real, nobody had really done what you were trying to do, right? Uh, I believe I started working on a project that was already in place in Donahue's lab, but I built upon it with um, metathesis reactions and posing con reactions and DL's older to uh, try and make polycyclic systems, which polycyclic systems are kind of hard to synthesize depending upon which molecule you have just because of sterics and uh, polar groups and organic chemistry because uh, they kind of inter fear with the um, reagents you're using sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So let's, let's expand just a little bit on your undergraduate research. So you spent a couple of years or a couple of semesters, I guess, doing uh, 392. Mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, and then did you did you spend some summer? You, you said something about spending some summers in the lab as well? Yes. So. Um, I actually got a CERF fellowship, which is through the ACS or the organic division of the ACS. So I was actually paid by the ACS to do research because it's a summer, summer undergraduate research fellowship. And I believe I got that my sophomore semester because I was also a McNair student at the time. Uh -huh. So it was the summer after my sophomore year. Yeah, so I think it's real important for, for students to know that uh, spending time in a lab, especially during the summer, quite frequently comes with monetary uh, benefits, right? I mean, so yep. you, you got a competitive fellowship from the, the National American Chemical Society. I think that that's a very um, telling achievement for you uh, because, you know, the, they don't hand out a bunch of those, right? Uh, I think there were 12 students that summer. I could be wrong, but it was around a dozen students from across the United States. Yep, yeah, 12 students from around the United States, and, and you got one here at Southern Miss, and we're very proud of that. Um, so now you, you started off doing some research, and, and then you did your surf. Um, what other experiences did you have that led up to your to your capstone experience? So, like I stated, when I was a surf fellow, I was also a McNair scholar during the sophomore year. So, they actually, what McNair does is they have you work in a research lab. You, you have to find your uh, principal investigator or PI. Uh, since I already had Donahue, he kind of told me, hey, uh, not to reveal too much information about my family, but we're, we came from a lower socioeconomic class and McNair is for uh, uh, people of diversity and from lower socioeconomic classes to help them do research during the year because sometimes they realize or they do realize that uh, working a job interferes with being able to do research. So I actually want to suggest everybody in this class look into the McNair program because it's an awesome program to be a part of. Uh, I connected with all my fellow scholars. Uh, I got further paid to work in Donahue's lab. Okay, fantastic. Yeah, and we actually had the uh, a McNair scholars program representative come and talk to the class earlier on in the semester. I'm glad you mentioned that because, um, you know, that that's one of the things that we really um, really take pride in here at the University of Southern Mississippi is our, our undergraduate students being able to to get in and do research and obviously we value that in chemistry because we actually require at least a semester of research right? right so so can you so you know you haven't started your independent career yet I mean you're in graduate school uh, and you know your undergraduate uh, career, uh, time here seemed to have prepared you quite well for graduate school because you you got an NSF pre-doctoral fellowship, uh, so congratulations. Highly competitive, right? Uh, something that comes from the National Science Foundation. Uh, they don't they don't hand those out either. Uh, so obviously your undergraduate program here did a good job of preparing you for that kind of work. Uh, can you talk a little bit about the the experiences you had in your undergraduate program here that really prepared you, that you feel prepared you for graduate school and prepared you for 
for getting that NSF fellowship? I am. <laughs> so uh, one of the things you actually do do in the McNair program is write a research paper at I don't know if they changed it and made it the end of the school year or the end of the summer, but you work on it uh, basically all year. And uh, it's to help you start thinking in terms of the way research is written in your program. So as part of the, sorry, as part of the NSF, you have to write a research statement and a personal statement. Mm -hmm. So personal statements kind of how you got here in life. Why are you continuing to do uh, a doctoral degree? But a research statement is about, re for the NSF at least, it's about research you may want to do in grad school. So you have to write a research statement from scratch, and I believe there's a max of three pages you're allowed. It's pretty short, yeah. Yeah, it's either two or three pages, and it's as well as the personal statement. So you kind of have to be concise in what you are describing when um, trying to get a fellowship or a scholarship because most of the time the committees, they want to see what you have done. Mm -hmm. They do not want long-winded words. They want to know what you have done and how you're going to continue doing that, being meet, either meeting high standards or doing groundbreaking research. So. Okay, fantastic. So can you can you talk a little bit about so so McNair helped you out with that, so that that that's great. What about just in the regular curriculum? What courses did you take or what experiences did you have that you feel like when you transitioned into graduate school? You know, I was really you know, hey, that really helped me out. In, in anything in particular? So. I actually find chemical literature important because, as I said, it's one of those or as I linked to earlier, it's one of those courses that teaches you how to write chemical papers from SciFinder, which if you are not familiar with SciFinder, you should probably contact the library and go ahead and get a SciFinder account because you can either search by research topics or chemical reactions or reagents used. It's, it's a good, program to learn to use early on, as well as ChemDraw, which I actually learned how to use in the research lab before I learned how to use it in ChemLit, thankfully, because that would have been stressful at the point. <laughs> okay, fantastic. Well, why don't you uh, tell the students a little bit about what it's like to be a first-year graduate student? So, LSU is a bit different as a first-year grad student. You don't do rotations, you actually interview professors because what LSU wants you to do is get all your academic courses done in the first year. So you are just focusing on research the next, depending upon your, um, I lost my words. Your project? Yeah, depending upon your project or your subject area, you it can take anywhere between three to like seven years of research and sometimes longer. So they want you to get all their ac your academic courses done in the first year and then start on your research to hopefully be able to um, get done with your research quicker and find a job quicker uh -huh. because there's actually a lab here where most students actually leave with a job before they even give their defense because of how many papers they already have. Because I believe Kartika's group here usually has an average of six or seven papers per grad student. Wow. Which is actually <laughs> impressive for those who are not used to publications as a grad student. Yeah. No, that, that's, a, that's a fairly high number of, of pubs per student, so that, that, that's fantastic. So what kind of, um, what kind of uh, things are you doing um, your first semester as a graduate student? Obviously, you're taking classes. Uh, and you have to you had to interview some faculty, but what other activities uh, do, do occupy your your day there that the students might need to know about if they're thinking about going to grad school? So I'm also a teaching assistant because most schools require that you teach for at least a semester or a year, maybe longer if you end up in a research lab that does not have funding. And that's how you get an assistantship at a school is you will actually end up teaching lower level chemistry courses or labs depending upon the school. So on Tuesday and Thursdays, I actually 
help teach, or I actually do teach Gen Chem Lab, and sometimes I help professors grade or proctor their exams. Okay. And now, before we wrap it up, there is one thing that you did while you were here at the University of Southern Mississippi that we haven't touched on yet, but I think it's important for Chemistry 108 students to know about. And that is you were also a learning assistant, if I recall correctly. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, and so uh, you were a learning assistant for Gen Chem, is that correct? Yes. Okay, can you I was also a teaching assistant for one semester for uh, Chemistry for Non-Majors Lab. Okay. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm hopeful that some of our Chemistry majors that are listening today uh, will think about the learning assistant program. Uh, okay, so do you have anything that you want to say about being a learning assistant, did that was that a, a positive experience for you? Was that something you would recommend? It was a positive experience. I will say most professors know there's always a couple students that do not want to cooperate with lesson plans, and that makes our job a little tougher, but it's still enjoyable. And um, most professors will actually tell you if you cannot explain a concept to another person, you don't know that topic. That's you right. know the language around that topic, but you can't actually describe it to the point where somebody else knows what you're talking about. That's right. I'm so glad you said that, actually, because one of the learning strategies that I've given the students in Chemistry 108 is to try to teach what they're learning to somebody else so that they can measure uh, the level of their understanding of that particular, uh, whatever the topic may be. So I'm, I'm glad I'm glad to, to hear you say that. And that experience, obviously, uh, challenges you with that every day, right? To be a learning assistant, to have to um, break something down into into its most essence, the uh, most uh, elemental form, so that uh, a student can understand what what the concept is. So I think we're going to wrap it up here. Um, I want to thank you again for taking the time to talk to to the Chemistry 108 students. I I think uh, they they will get a lot out of what um, you had to say about, about your experience here at the University of Southern Mississippi and uh, we wish you all the best we wish you the best of luck uh, at LSU going forward uh, we know this is your first semester but many more semesters to come uh, but but I just want to finish up or would you be okay if if students reached out to you by email if they have any questions about your experience here at Southern Miss and and why you chose the route that you chose yes that's perfectly fine Okay, well, students, I will, as usual, I will put a slide at the end of this uh, um, interview with um, Ms. Ellis's uh, email address, and you can feel free to contact her if you have any other questions. And again, Claire, thank you very much for taking the time to, to talk with us. We appreciate it very much. No problem.